the AWS Financial Services Symposium, presented by The Cube. Welcome back, everyone, to the Cube's live coverage here in New York City for AWS Financial Symposium 24. I'm your host, John Furrier. We're here getting all the action, getting all the data, generating the data here on camera. We've got Jim Pupalu, who's the principal industry solutions financial services at MongoDB. Great to have you come on the Cube. Great to see you. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming on. So, you here. guys are a big partner, obviously, with AWS. We cover you guys at reInvent. You have the whole sugarcane thing. Big part of the ecosystem Mongo is with AWS. So, congratulations. Um, but you. here, we're in the Financial Services Symposium. So this is a competitive market, and data is like the heart of the value proposition of, in finance. You know? Absolutely. So real-time analytics, generative AI, vector search are three things that you guys are really pulling together for this these new applications that are emerging, and also taking advantage of existing applications. So what is the real-time analytics position you guys are taking? Explain what Mongo, how you guys view the role of real-time analytics. Absolutely. Like you said, uh, uh, the data is at uh, front and center of uh, uh, any industry, uh, more so uh, financial services industry, right? Um, and uh, it kind of uh, powers all these AI ML platforms, right? It's, uh, it's kind of like a, a fuel to these uh, different uh, models. So it is important, it's important to actually uh, come up with the right data if not to correct data, it's it's almost almost impossible to have a correct data. You need to have a right data, uh, right data in the different uh, uh, structures, right, and uh, and also right data uh, to these models yeah. in the moment in real time. That's where we come in. MongoDB provides the right data to these AI ML models in the moment in real time, right. So the gap that uh, we are filling with MongoDB here is that historically, if you think about uh, real time analytics. Uh, the analytics are gen generally done using uh, uh, historical data, yeah. right? Not so much about uh, operational real-time data, but those days are gone, right? Yeah. And uh, that's what we do. They do that very well. Like uh, we provide that real-time operational data that is needed for these uh, real-time analytics applications. You know, I'm watching some of the people here at the event. I saw the keynote upstairs. You got kind of a developer vibe, but also kind of a leadership vibe. Solutions are now the big discussion because everyone's been experimenting with Gen of AI. Developers are coding yeah. with obviously MongoDB and, and you guys have a great developer community. Obviously, everyone knows Mongo has been adopted by developers. It's the standard for developers. But when you think data is now as part of the development process, data is in the applications. It's not just an ingredient. It's wrapping in with the software. So you're starting to see the, the, the Gen AI models becoming very instrumental in the software development process. Absolutely. So that's changing the game and changing new opportunities. Can you share your vision and how you guys see that the confluence of real-time analytics, this new Gen AI paradigm, because there's new use cases that are emerging and old ones are being modernized in a new way, in a new era. Can you share your, what's that at the intersection of those things? Uh, what is that enabling? Real-time analytics plus generative AI. Definitely. First, let me take you to the second part of your question yeah. in that uh, how Gen AI is helping with uh, core migrations, so legacy migrations, right? Number of these are financial institutions, they are actually going through massive uh, transformation projects, right? Say like mm -hmm. mainframes or, or other legacy technology, right? Generative AI actually providing that uh, positive uh, catalyst type of a uh, help uh, to help uh, migrate the code, right? So these large languages can give you like a, say for example, you have a, a PL SQL code, it helps you actually create a, like a MQL, which is like native to MongoDB, right? Yeah. So that's, that's a help up. Uh, that is just providing. Uh, and uh, Gen AI, uh, there's a lot of budget on Gen AI these days, right? <laughs> I mean, in addition to the code migrations use case I just mentioned, yeah. there are a number of other innovative use cases, right? And uh, and uh, what, the way I see it is, uh, there's a there's a convergence, right, between uh, real-time analytics uh, using a Gen AI can open up a lot of innovative uh, use cases for our business uh, businesses. Like for example, uh, fraud prevention, risk management, EML and KYC, uh, right? And it can actually further improve the detection accuracies uh, using uh, using uh, the core technology behind uh, generative AI, which is vector search. Using vector search, you'll be able to further enhance these real-time AI applications or predictive analy analytics applications using vector search, which I said as a is a, is a foundation for a, for a 
uh, generating UI models. Okay, so first of all, first, there's a lot to unpack there. So the gamut of applications from risk management, all the stuff, all the, the blocking and tackling, all the, all the in the weeds, it's hard stuff can be augmented and helped. Absolutely. And yeah. the main app you see is fraud detection. I mean, that you, if you get that app right, I mean, everybody wants that. That's, that's a killer product. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's, a, it's a bit of an innovative uh, uh, um, uh, approach, uh, right? Because you might ask me, why vector search? Why, why can't you use a predictive analytics, right? Real-time predictive analytics, right? Um, if you ask me uh, uh, the reason for using vector search, right, in the, in the, in the case of predictive analytics, uh, there is always this uh, uh, delay in actually, uh, you know, addressing uh, uh, emerging uh, fraud uh, schemes, right? If there is some new fraud that is uh, that is emerging as we speak today, uh, real-time analytics or models may not be able to yeah. address that because you knew. The, 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 yeah, exactly. <laughs> I haven't seen that yet. You, you haven't seen that yet <laughs> because your model is not trained using that uh, uh, the data because your model is as good as your data, right? Which is mostly historical data and also yeah. real-time data. So, but uh, in the moment data, right, you may not be able to incorporate into actually detecting a fraud, right? That's where I think uh, uh, our vector search actually play a, a significant role in that uh, as you actually ingest a new transactions, right, uh, about a, a card payment, for example, and you can actually take uh, the transaction uh, information as one vector and also the customer profile as an, another vector and also anything around that uh, customer, right, you can combine that and create uh, these vectors and be able to find uh, these uh, different patterns and uh, anomalies uh, uh, at the at the speed of uh, light, right? And uh, and they help address these. Uh, so, uh, Shiv, yeah. if I hear you correctly, what I'm hearing you say is vector search. Now, I'm going to oversimplify it. Vector search great is for retrieval. Everyone's doing RAG, retrieval augmentation generation. That's fine. Similarities. Re vectors are great for that. But what you're saying is because of the way vectors work and vector search, you can see something new because it has a pattern similarity to something else that Absolutely. you can see. And then be directionally correct. You don't have to be 100% accurate, but you'll have enough information through the vector Absolutely. embeds and AKA the search or notification in this case, that gives you the advantage. Is that, is that what you're saying? Absolutely, yeah, that gives you the advantage. Advantage of uh, finding uh, anomalies and uh, patterns in the moment and real time. Uh, because uh, timeliness is so important here, right? Mm -hmm. And um, kind of um, uh, uh, proactively activating or proactively working uh, uh, on uh, real-time data is so uh, instrumental in the preventing fraud. Because in the fraud prevention, right, you don't want to, uh, you want to prevent the fraud before it happens, right? Yeah. Right? So that uh, that uh, timeliness, right, that, uh, that's what vector search I mean, The cost of um, implementing vector search uh, and... Uh, uh, is is uh, and uh, and also deploying uh, a solution like that on a mobile devices is a very efficient. Yeah. Like whereas like calling uh, an external uh, predictive analytics endpoint, uh, you may actually add uh, latency to uh, the observations or uh, inferences, right? And may actually negatively impact your customer. The benefits, the benefit, the ROI, and the uh, benefits are high. Customer customer satisfaction as All well, right? All right. So what yeah. you're getting at here, I love this. I love this conversation. You're talking about revolutionizing fraud detection. Absolutely. What, explain that. Explain how you see the revolution happening in fraud detection. What's being disrupted and what's enabling? Because I've always said, and we've always said in the queue, this is a disruptive enabler, this wave. It's disrupting, but it's also enabling value, right? So tell me what's disrupting. Because if you're revolutionizing fraud, oh, sorry. explain. Well, so uh, if you look at uh, some uh, numbers around the fraud, the amount of losses we uh, we see annually in the, just on a card fraud, just to give you an example, in the U.S., we're losing around $40 billion per, per year, annually. So we are, the, we are losing that much amount of money when you have all these uh, uh, latest and greatest uh, uh, technology tooling around, like predictive analytics, right? Mm -hmm. right? But we're still losing money. Why are we losing money, right? I mean, if you, think, if you ask that question to yourself, and, uh, uh, then, uh, then uh, it becomes very clear um, there are some limitations with the, with the existing uh, predictive analytics. Mm -hmm. It's like a, one of that, as I said, it may not be able to actually accommodate uh, emerging fraud trends, or the trends that uh, the, the emerging uh, fraud uh, schemes and things like that, because the fraud is like evolving. They constantly change. The fraudsters, they constantly change their schemes, right? The predictive modeling is not actually able to do that uh, in real-time fashion, whereas a vector search, you can actually 
create this uh, uh, related data, group the yeah. data, and they use the, the group the data using vector search to find uh, those patterns. And if you see a fraudulent pattern, right, using the transaction data and the customer data, you can actually block the transaction right on the mobile device or a web device and, uh, and then send it to like a case management team to actually, you know, like a further investigate that yeah. thing, right? So by, by doing that, what you're doing is like you're enhancing or in other words, you're disrupting uh, the existing real-time analytics, predictive analytics by incorporating a uh, vector search based uh, anomaly detection on top of what you already have, right? So this is going to actually improve the perform performance. When you say what you already have, you mean talking about your existing operational database. Yes. Which is Mongo. You guys do a lot of Atlas and all that stuff. And then on top of that, you've got an event-driven, real-time fraud detection system. A absolutely. That's exactly what I said. Like, speaking about MongoDB, to do something like that, you need real-time data. That's what MongoDB provides. Like, yeah. you have a real-time data. And also, yeah. uh, anomaly detection or a vector search in general requires uh, different structures of data. Structured, semi-structured, yeah. and unstructured data. And you need a database platform that can actually accommodate these types of uh, different structures of data, as well as uh, different types of data, right? Like for yeah. example, operational data is one thing we talked about, and also vector data, right? And you don't need to go and um, uh, find a license for uh, or buy a new uh, dedicated vector database for this particular need, and you ideally you want to have everything in one platform, that's what MongoDB offers. You have like- The unified only, platform. I'm sorry? It's one unified platform? One unified pro platform will help you create these innovative solutions uh, quickly and you take them to market very quickly. And also even like a, to POC or, a, or a iTrade, right? Uh, and it, it, it improves the uh, developer productivity, like I said, right? Yeah. And uh, cost is a big thing for any type of a Gen AI solutions. It's going to cut down your cost and uh, improve customer experience. Phenomenal. Okay. Well, we're a huge fan of vector databases, as I've always been bragging on the cube. All these transcripts that we do go into a, a database and we, we apply vector search to them. Because the conversations can be retrieved, it's kind of very summarization. These like it's a very case. good way to categorize certain technical conversations with a lot of jargon, and then cluster system uh, retrieval is phenomenal. So I see the benefit. The question I have for you is: Vector Search is kind of new, and in this integrated way, it's kind of Vector's been around for a while, but this new application is key. There's been customers out there that have implemented fraud detection systems in the past. Yes. What, what do they do? Do they rip and replace? Is there integration? Take me through. I'm sold. I like what you're selling right now. Okay, got it. Revolutionizing okay. core detection. You had me at that. All right, I see the benefit. Operational database, real-time event system on top. I got it. You, you have me. What do I do with my existing stuff? No, you're not going to throw away your uh, existing stuff out of the window. You're going to still keep uh, using the existing stuff. What we are saying is we are, we are saying how do you enhance existing uh, ecosystem yeah. Yeah. to actually uh, increase the fraud detection accuracy, yeah. right? Like I said, right now we are losing $40 billion annually, right? Which means we are still struggling, right? How do I enhance the existing ecosystem, right? So you're not throwing anything. You're not throwing any rules-based systems uh, we have in place. Those are important. They need to stay. And we have a real-time analytics in place, predictive. And uh, those are important. They need to stay. And on top of that, like I said, uh, real-time analytics with this Gen AI based attack, like which is a vector search, you can actually- Another layer. Yeah, another layer, right? On top of that, to help uh, increase the detection accuracy. Even if you make a, an improvement in 2% improvement, actually that translates to a lot of money in general, right? So, so they're taking some unstructured data, you vectorize yeah. it, put it in a vector search, put the uh, client device or app, yeah. have the lightweight front end. Absolutely, yeah. And then everything's kind of tied together. Yeah, because on top of the existing stuff, on top of the existing stuff, we are not throwing anything. Existing stuff is working well, but we could be, could have been better, right? Yeah. Because uh, we could have like uh, the fraud losses can be actually reduced better, right? Then we so like if you think think like a developer, you constantly yeah. or relentlessly try to improve this uh, uh, tooling around this uh, fraud, right? So vector search actually provides yeah. one such innovative. Uh, innovative uh, I mean, uh, option to improve it. I love this new generative AI. I do believe, I do agree with NVIDIA's CEO. It's a category. Jensen Wong said it's not a static programmed environment. It's generative, it's runtime, everything's new. Yes, yeah. So you gotta have this new capability. So the old ways and what, it was, was static based rules, right? I mean, this was the old way to do it, right? Yeah, so think about it, right? Like say like, you have a, a rule of, uh, uh, at a customer level, any transaction more than $1,000, you block them uh, right right there. If you have such a rule, 
what if uh, actually that rule need to be changed, right? And you may actually go and ask your developer, it's not a we can change, right? And it takes a while. And uh, similarly, and even predictive analytics, as I said, and if there's a new emerging trend, right? And uh, there's a new data source that you want to use, for example, social media data, right? If you want to use uh, alternate data sources to actually help improve the detection, you may not be able to do that like in real time. Like uh, uh, you need to actually take down your model and retrain it and, uh, and ex feature extraction. And there's a lot of cost and a lot of time. So now you would wish like there is something like that where yeah. you can actually try to actually block some anomalies or uh, fraud patterns right off the bat in a more efficient manner, right? So you guys are doing it today. What's been the customer reaction and what's well, the relationship with AWS? The, the, the customers are so happy. Like one of the customers I was talking to recently was really thrilled to hear this uh, idea, especially Vector Search uh, uh, can uh, work uh, very efficiently on uh, our mobile devices where you do not have a lot of uh, yeah. RAM or... Uh, That's the edge, get it at the edge. Yeah, yeah. get it on the edge. Like yeah. it's not like a lot, a big model that you need to make a call out, but you can uh, uh, do this uh, efficient search on a mobile device, right? Vector Search, that's one thing. And uh, that uh, that C uh, uh, might uh, help uh, uh, improve uh, detection accuracies a lot, and uh, and uh, and the AWS is is a partner of ours, right? And uh, uh, it's a, it's an fast exercise. Like uh, while we provide all the data and the, all the tooling that need to actually uh, create these amazing uh, GenAI based tools, like uh, using Vector Search, uh, AWS provides that. Uh, the hardware. <laughs> the, the hardware, and uh, and they help actually create uh, these. Uh, uh, amazing applications, right? And, uh, it, and take them to market quickly. It's funny. I, I, some Amazonians get kind of upset when I call them the hardware. Um, I don't mean that in a negative way, but they do have a lot of hardware. They got the GPUs, they got the infrastructure as a service. Of course, they got Lambda, they got all the software. But but to the from a Gen AI standpoint, that acceleration of the computing infrastructure, and that's a term NVIDIA coined and uses, is really important to have that performance. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you guys provide a lot of capabilities yeah. from Amazon to pump out more compute. To, to quote an example, for example, uh, Amazon, they have a, what do you call a bedrock, and we have a partnership with the Amazon, and uh, and we have a deep integration with the bedrock. Bedrock is your uh, ML, uh, Gen AI a model platform, right? And uh, and uh, in, in this example, I was talking like a fraud detection uh, using vector search, and uh, uh, a, 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 any customer can actually leverage bedrock to create these vector embeddings. Are using a bedrock platform, mm -hmm. and then they use the embeddings and store them in MongoDB. Like I said, because you want to keep a uh, vector data uh, together with your operational data, yeah. so that uh, they are together and it's easy to search and uh, find anomalies and all that from in an efficient manner. Yeah. But you can still uh, uh, you can still use a bedrock to create those uh, uh, embeddings. Yeah, uh, yeah. So and that's key for people to know. That's the, 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 embedding, the embeddings could be any API, Open AI, any bedrock. API. But storing it in a search, vector search. You Together, co-located in the same database, that's the key. Yeah. And you create an AI data store uh, that is uh, having, uh, like I said, uh, different structures of data and uh, different types of data, operational and vector, together in one database platform. Like you mentioned yeah. previously, uh, a unified data platform. But also, like I just wanted to clarify that thing. Like, uh, uh, yes, uh, our customers, they can bring their own uh, vector embedding platforms, like a... Uh, um, like uh, as, as I said, Bedrock or uh, Open AI embeddings. Uh, although I recommend Bedrock. <laughs> well, so, yeah, in the family, so yeah, to speak. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Open AI is Microsoft. <laughs> yeah. um, but but yeah. again, uh, the, it, this is an important architectural design element. Knowing Absolutely. the embeddings and storing it properly with the operational data is a key. gives you the key event-based enablement, and the real time is where you capture the pattern. Absolutely. Absolutely, you ca you capture the pattern real time, real time uh, unknown patterns, right? Yeah. The patterns are not known up until that point, yeah. right? And the, or the trends that are not known up until that point, <laughs> or uh, or uh, the the models that you actually trained, the predictive models that are not aware of the pattern yet, <laughs> right? You don't have a luxury of actually retraining them, yeah. right? And that's where you can actually yeah. uh, use the, the group of a data and use this vector search to, like I said, yeah. uh, uh, to find anomalies there. Well, Shiv, I really appreciate you coming on theCUBE. It was a fantastic conversation. Of course, we've been very pleased to be covering MongoDB over the years. We're a customer, small customer, um, but of course, you guys have developers and small customers, but also a lot of large enterprises, and the success continues. And I think this is just another example of you guys enabling a lot of value for building on top of these operational and other databases that you guys provide.
Yes, yeah. yeah. If I if I want to actually use one uh, closing statement, MongoDB is that one uh, unified data uh, platform which can actually uh, in just any type of a data structure and uh, you can store different types of data and provide that uh, real time. Uh, uh, you know, like uh, sources to <laughs> any type of uh, analytics applications and, uh, and the Gen AI applications. Awesome. We are here at the AWS Cloud Financial Services Symposium. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE. We'll be right back after this short break. <laughs>